Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mysteries and Disappearances video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do another entry here. This one actually from a suggestion from a little while back. In fact, this was over four years ago when this suggestion was made. It just goes to show that if you don't see it now, I definitely do look back. And who knows, I'll have a chance to cover some of your suggestions later on. But this one has to do with the mysterious disappearance of a gentleman, a guy who basically left planet Earth. Like in other words, no one knows his whereabouts to this day, but there's a lot of mystery associated with his final moments. And there's a certain person of interest, as how the quote was, that was tied to his disappearance. But caveat, at least up front, they were never fully charged with anything, but again, a lot of people suspect what might have happened. But it has to do with this. You're looking at a picture of him now. His name was Charles Southern Jr. So let's go ahead and let's talk about the disappearance of Charles Southern Jr. So here's essentially what happened. I don't have much information when it comes to his life, let's say, growing up from a child going to the teenage and maybe some adult years. What I do know, though, is he was born on July 25th, 1948. And then later on in life, there in Chicago, Illinois, he ended up actually being a teacher, a college instructor. And in that case, he was the assistant chairman of the English department at a junior college there in Chicago. I mentioned this specifically because in order to have a position like that or any relative position like that, one would think that you would have to have almost like a sound mind, like you're someone that's making rational decisions, you're someone that has a set of guidelines in place, you're not doing much crazy things, in other words, and that's what leads to this net of cir next, next set of circumstances being very mysterious as to his actions. Somewhere along the way, he was actually introduced to a group that was called the Conscious Development of Body, Mind, and Soul. Sounds innocent, right? Like, it's definitely something that um, it sounds like it's going to be a wholesome experience. It was led by a spiritual leader called Terry Hoffman, who you're looking at a picture of here. And this was sometime at least in the 80s, because ultimately he ended up disappearing in December 1987, somewhere around there. So somewhere before that time period, and at least according to the information that I was reading, it was almost like he was there for a little while, maybe at least a year, maybe more. But he definitely joined that group and became one of their higher members. There seemed to be different levels associated within that group. Terry Hoffman was the highest one. She was like the, the alpha, like the biggest spiritual leader there. But he, in turn, Charles, actually ended up being a higher part of that chapter. It said his family actually thinks that the reason he joined it was because at that time he was looking for something, a group involving religion and a group involving enlightenment. And so when you're dealing with a name like Conscious Development of Body, Mind, and Soul, it definitely seems like that's the case. But as it turns out, at least according to a lot of alleged information, the group itself had other type of activity, almost cult-like activity. This is what apparently they thought, or at least according to the main uh, person, Terry Hoffman. They fought against what was described as quote-unquote black lords. They lived here, but within various planes of existence, I don't know, dimensions, other type of alternate universes, who knows. And then on top of that, they actually did everything for the Dark Lord himself, Satan. So that's their belief. That's basically what they went by. All the followers that were there in that group, and she had followers throughout the country, but their main one was actually the Chicago chapter. That's what they believed in. In fact, it was at a certain point that she was claiming that they were being attacked by those quote-unquote black lords. And with his permission, like eventually Charles Southern Jr. got into such a high position that he was able to visit her home in Dallas. That's when one of those attacks occurred by those black lords. There were other people there from the chapter there as well. And then that's when they formed some kind of circle 
and I don't know what was happening essentially within it, but it was definitely causing some bad influences, with not just with Charles Southern Jr., but it makes it seem like with the rest of the members. That's when many of them began to suffer from mental and emotional problems. Um, one has to figure that there's, if it's something along the lines of like a cult-like uh, group, that there's a lot of teachings there that are done to break people. Like, in other words, to um, get their will down to a certain point until it goes over, like it's broken. And then they become much more susceptible to suggestions, to other beliefs, uh, to the idea that they need to cling on to the actual group and so on. And then that's what it seemed like was happening here. I don't know if there was other factors too, maybe some medicinal factors or other type of items, but... Who knows? But the key thing was it was impacting this guy, Charles Southern Jr., so much so that eventually he was found wandering the streets, holding newspapers, and then just repeatedly saying that I lived for art. Something was happening to him, right? Something was happening with his mind at that point. And all the indications point or seem to point that it was once he joined that group that his life basically went in that bad direction. His family was worried about this. His sister took him to a hospital. She thought that he was suicidal. His mother also uh, visited him every single day that he was there. And unfortunately, uh, that's when two of those members of that same group, the one I was just mentioning earlier, the one led by Terry Hoffman, also visited. And on one of those uh, times, um, they were there and then the mother was there and they told her to leave. That way they could talk to him by himself. And after he was released from that, that stay there within the hospital, I don't know if he was going through also some kind of mental therapy, maybe something else. That's when he returned back to his normal activities, I guess. The indication I got from this was that it was being, again, like an assistant chairman there at that junior college, or it could mean alternatively, like maybe he was cured within the hospital, but normal activities, meaning that he was back to doing all that crazy stuff, like walking around, holding newspapers, chanting things, and so on. I don't know, but I get the impression more it was on the former rather than the latter. But things took an unfortunate turn. If his family thought that everything was going okay by that point, things took an unfortunate turn back in the uh, at the late part of December 1987. That's when he told his family that he was going to take a trip to India. Big trip, too. This was apparently going to be something that would involve at least several weeks, like two weeks or so. And so he's told his family about that. They kind of got the sense that something was wrong about this, but they didn't either press him for more information or maybe they did and he just didn't reveal it. But one of his last conversations was that everything was okay, that he was fine, and then he was about to leave in about maybe three days, at least from the time of that phone call. And that was it. That was pretty much the last time that anyone ever heard about the, about him, like his family, his friends, co-workers, and so on. That final conversation where he was saying that everything was fine and he'll be leaving in three days, that was the last whereabouts associated with Charles Southern Jr. The parents and the family, again, were a little worried, but he said that he was going to be gone those weeks, so they let that time pass. But clearly, whenever that passed and there was still nothing happening, like no communication with him, they went to his home, and then when inside, that's when they found his passport. You know, the passport that would normally be used, right, when it comes to going on trips. Looking through it, they found that there was actually nothing, no entry stamps when it came to India, those usual stamps that are done in any foreign country that showcase the location and the date, nothing for India there. On top of that, they found in a drawer a medication, something that's used to apparently anesthetize, even up to paralyze people, and it could only be injected. But they found that there within one of his drawers. And then most interestingly enough, but again, pretty bad on this case, there was a strange symbol, if you could call it that, left at the house. His coat, had one of his coats that he had, had been folded and then placed on a stool. And then on top of that, there was his hat that was placed there. It was very curious the way it was styled. You wouldn't do this by accident. It was done very, very purposeful. 
And then when that happened, the, apparently later on, it was discovered that what that meant was it was a Nigerian symbol associated with death, almost like a tribal symbol, and that's linked to death itself. And then otherwise, they found two other things. One was a note stating, and this was from him, stating that I came under a bad influence and I was trying to fight it myself. That's what he placed. And then the other thing was his own last will and testament. And interestingly enough, in it, he was naming that woman, Terry Hoffman, as the executor of his estate. Remember, she's the one that was the uh, main person associated with that group. So now he that, that he was missing, on top of that, he had this will and testament, and she was going to get everything according to it. Things took a little bit of a different turn because apparently, again, this is allegedly, she's never been cited for anything, even up to her death. But apparently she was involved in the death of not just one, but two husbands, her son, six followers, and then two other people as well. And in many of those circumstances, many if not all, they were all basically stating that she was going to be the beneficiary associated with insurance policies should something happen to them. So no direct link, again, associated like in terms of charges to Terry Hoffman, but at least with all those other circumstances, I'm just placing that out there. And that's, that was actually featured on that wonderful show, Unsolved Mysteries, as well. They were stating the same thing. All those deaths and all those uh, items basically led to huge amounts. We're talking half a million dollars in insurance policies and then hundreds of thousands of dollars in properties as well. And even though she was never fully charged in anything, not even anything associated with Charles Southern Jr.'s disappearance, she was always a person of interest up until her death. She ended up dying uh, in, t in, in, in October of 2015, never charged, but again, a big person of interest, including for Charles Southern Jr. And if you're wondering what happened to him, nothing has been found ever since his disappearance in December of 1987. Again, with that mysterious circumstance of that passport being there, that, that anesthetized uh, compound there found in his home as well. And then that strange last will and testament naming everything to Terry Hoffman. He was never found, never, ever found. He was just declared dead afterward. And his poor mom actually ended up dying later on in 2015. Again, knowing uh, no answers associated to his whereabouts. But that's essentially what happened to him afterwards. So here he was, someone becoming a uh, person within a junior college, an assistant chairman, and then somewhere along the way being involved with that group, becoming a high member associated with it, going from a, uh, a respectable place, like a sound mind and body, to then being in an area where he's having mental issues, having emotional problems, and then seen wandering the streets, and then having this group eventually get him apparently again, and then him just disappearing outright. It's just a, a sad set of circumstances for him all around. 1987, we're talking almost, uh, what, 40 years now since that disappearance, about 35 or so. So if something comes up, who knows, there may be some link, something else that is associated with finding more information on it. But at least up to now, there just hasn't been anything like that. But if anybody has any more info, anything else I might have missed, please post those comments below. All right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care.